Welcome back everyone. Heat pump uh, split AC systems are really efficient and they're great for adding something of a HVAC to a place that is um, that doesn't have your ducted system. So in this case I already have one. I'm going to install another one and this is going to be a DIY project and we're just going to tell you step by step on how to do that. And this is uh, possible if you know a little bit of the concepts of HVAC and all that. So let's get started. Generally the split AC systems comes in two boxes, one the outdoor unit, the other one is the indoor unit. You also have to remember that it does need some accessories which are included. In most cases sometimes it may not be. One is the line set, you need the high pressure line and the low pressure line and the line set length depends on how long you want it from your indoor unit to the outdoor unit. So that has to be customized if it's longer than the standard 12 feet or 15 feet. Uh, you do get some tape to tape that around and you get the electrical wire for the connection between the internal and the external unit. So here's our internal unit that comes with the remote and uh, Cosway, it's a decent company looks like, uh, pretty cheap. So 18,000 BTU, that's good for 600 to 700 square feet um, cooling and heating. And this particular model has the new refrigerant R32 and also the CR2 value of 21, which is pretty darn efficient. That's what we're going for. All right, let's try to hook this up. All right, the first step here is to take some measurements. Um, in this case, you know, where to mount the inside bracket. So that's what I've done up here. So you can see the bottom of the bracket here, top of the bracket, and then the outlet hole for <coughs> the pipes to run from inside to outside and the wires and everything. So that's about six inches from the, uh, where the bracket ends. You know, you can measure the bracket and see this. What is important to know here is that the bracket has to be mounted securely so that it doesn't pull out. So we got some studs here, you can see right on the bottom, double stud here. Uh, the challenge with this particular model is that it's smaller than 16 inches. S slightly smaller, I don't know why. So um, you could grab one stud and put the other one on anchors, but in this case, just to be proactive, I'm just gonna cut this piece out, put a plywood across, and then mount this on the plywood, that way it's super strong. But you don't have to do that, you can put it on one stud and then an anchor on the other side as well. The bracket is now installed. The main thing here is to make sure that the bracket is level. Uh, as you can see, if you put it perfectly level, um, top and bottom, and also map out where the lines are gonna go out. We're gonna drill a hole from inside to outside, and then the lines will go out that way. First thing first, we drill a hole from inside to outside, and that is basically where we measured it. And uh, there's a cinder block in the back, so run a pilot hole all the way through so we have a gauge of where it's coming out. Two bolts in, top and bottom on this one, and uh, even though they are in anchors, it would be safer to put more screws here. Um, masonry screws and that will hold this and then we'll do the same on the other side. Both the brackets are mounted, all we have to do now is sit the AC on top and bolt the AC to these brackets. Okay, four bolts are uh, secured and just need to tighten it. See, so all four lined up properly and good to go. All right, the high pressure line, low pressure line, the drain line and the wire all sticking out. We'll hook up to that, but we'll go inside. All right, and inside you got the same lines uh, coming through, the wire and drain hose. We're just gonna hook them up to these copper lines here. Just have to make sure um, it's a good idea to use this uh, thread sealant. It kind of lets uh, you spin a little easier when the flare fittings are coming together. Here comes the tightening part, the flare fitting needs to nicely sit and that's why you use that lubricant, it's kind of, and it doesn't snag the line, but it clearly <coughs> gives an advantage in fitting those flare fittings perfectly and getting it seated without leaks. All right, so tighten it, but don't overdo it. Bring a little bit of that thread sealant for better <coughs> fit. All right, so at this point, these two <coughs> hoses are hooked up, uh, the high pressure side and the low pressure side. So indoor unit is all hooked up. Um, the drain hose is here, and that is also going out, so that's good. And the electrical, you just need to hook up uh, the line connections after we install. It's, uh, I believe we are ready to put up the unit on the wall at this time, and it just gets mounted there. Let's do it. Okay, the next step is basically taping these uh, lines together all the way. 
and what we realized is the two inch hole wasn't big enough. Definitely need a three inch hole uh, so that the drain can comfortably drain the water. So what we're gonna do is have a secondary hole for the drain uh, separately and everything else fits in the two inch hole. So it's all, uh, indoor unit is all done. Let's go to the outdoor and that's the main um, refrigerant hookup as well as electrical on the outside. All right, line is coming down here. We'll put a cover to cover all that. I'm not gonna shorten the line and do the flare all that and it's just a couple of extra feet. We'll coil it neatly later. Um, for now, I'm um, using the sealant and match it and start it and then we can tighten that. Same thing with this, we'll do it down in there as well. This uh, unit is filled with refrigerant. Once we hook up the lines, then we can release the refrigerant from the compressor onto the lines. Now for the low pressure side, do the same thing. A little bit of the lubrication thread sealant in there on the flare. Hand start it. It's a little crooked. Always helps to keep it straight. Watch out. See how the line is turning a little bit and that's what the lubrication is supposed to help uh, not to twist the line. Perfect. It's taken off. I just write on the bottom one as well. Alright, on the next one it's 17 millimeter. Got a flat wrench on this one but <coughs> don't have that for 22 I believe is this one, right? On the top. Is it 21 or 22? 22. 22. 22 and 17. All right, so something to notice here. So this particular inlet or nozzle here is where your vacuum pump goes. So you can suck the vacuum out um, before you turn on the refrigerant from the compressor onto the lines. And these are those uh, Allen key inside where you turn on like a tap and that'll put the refrigerant into the line. You have to do the hot side and the uh, cold side for these two refrigerant to flow all the way through to make the cycle and your vacuum pump will be on this side um, We're gonna run that so even though it's a DIY project It's a little bit advanced DIY you need to know HVAC concepts as well as you need to have a vacuum pump and a few other you know uh, tools um, like a flare set or something like that. So um, same with the electrical. If you don't know electrical, this is a 240. So if you don't know about that, uh, make an electrician install up to this point and then you can just uh, go from there. Uh, you do need to put a pull out or a fuse, uh, if not a pull out and the breaker inside. So electrical is also essential to do that. To hook up a manifold to any of these uh, split AC systems, you do need these uh, little adapter. Uh, generally it comes with some manifold kits for if you buy it specifically for split AC but if not this is kind of like essential thing and then your manifold uh, gauge goes into that and you hook up your vacuum pump to the manifold at that point. All right we are starting to vacuum uh, the moisture out of the system out of the lines and the way we're doing it is you know hooking up to here and um, on the blue side here as you can see it's pulling the vacuum it's below zero the problem is it doesn't tell how much exactly there's such a small area there uh, there are other gauges that is specifically for this purpose on the negative side it'll measure more uh, you can hook up that uh, that as well and our vacuum hose is connected to this pump it's a really good pump simple um, I think it's hundred hundred and fifty dollars something in that range you can put a link in the description for the vacuum pump and the manifold as well so you can pick it up. So this is what you need, this, this, some electrical knowledge and uh, uh, electrical disconnect and then into the breaker box of your house. And of course these lines and I need to tape them up and tidy them up and let this run for about an hour, half hour, an hour. And then we can um, close that up and open the refrigerant. And that is it pretty much. And the electrical needs to be hooked up at that point. Okay, hooking up the indoor unit with these wires, you have L1, uh, L2, and um, yes, and ground. Okay, so 
all of these are hooked up at this point. Let's go outside and hook up the same wire with the same L1, L2, S and ground. And just like what we did on the indoor unit, the outdoor unit is the same, except you have two layers. The uh, two wires coming in, one from the power supply to power this unit and the other one going into the indoor unit. The power supply one, three wires in the back as you can see. Uh, and then on top of it is your connection just like what we did inside. That's it. Um, same black, red, white, and yellow, or green, and indoor unit matches the same thing. Right on the electrical side, it's always uh, best to make electrician run your main disconnect box. Uh, but just explaining it here that you know, your main supply comes in, and you have uh, one face here and the other face here, and the ground or the neutral goes in the bus bar the same exact wiring for the 240 volt or 120 volts uh, unit except uh, on the breaker box you will see the difference and in this case you know you have two faces coming in two lines right um, for the 240 unit for 110 unit you'll have a face and a neutral coming in uh, but it'll be the same wiring black and white uh, wires everything same on the box side but on the main panel the your breaker uh, it'll be different um, so this is the disconnect so this basically touches with this and this touches with this once you put it in so, so your input touches with your output so here's your input coming in output to the um, to the system and similarly the second line input coming in and the output to the system and on the breaker box side uh, we have a double pole 240 20 amp uh, circuit for the mini split and as you can see two faces coming in here this is a nice panel with the common neutral bus uh, and this would be a really upgrade but you won't have this chances are if you're retrofitting older system and in that it'll be the same scenario 240 you had to run uh, two wires into it the white and the black wire and then your ground and the neutral goes up on the buses all right and let's turn it on all right we're ready to turn off the vacuum pump and close off the circuit so that the vacuum that it's pulling now is sealed in the system now and now we can turn off the pump and basically monitor for a half hour to see if your pressure is creeping up if it's creeping up you have a leak uh, if it's not the longer it stays it's better um, so now we are gonna wait and then we'll come back and turn on the now we'll wait and we'll come back and release the refrigerant into the system. All right, so just an Allen key here. And oh, there it is, you can hear the hissing going into the line set. And look at the pressure on the manifold here. Creeping up, it's great. And the low side. Roof valves have to be open all the way. Yep. Open them all the way until they reach a point of stopping. All right, moment of truth. Uh, that's the remote that it came with. It has a bunch of uh, auto mode and high school stuff. Let's turn it on. Oh, light's working. Ah, it's opening. So it is functioning at this point. It's on the cool mode. Yep, starting to blow. We will check the temperature on the cool mode and then crank it up all the way on the heat to see the heat pump mode as well just to see how that works so basically that's all it is um, on how to do this and at this point you just clean up everything you know all the wires need to be um, completely wrapped up and this drain needs to be pushed out as well and it's working that's the most important thing outside unit is all done uh, just need to wrap this up a little more neatly electrical is done uh, and I need to wrap that up and put a cover on top of it and let's go see the inside. One final step is to cover up the lines by using these uh, covers and it comes in different pieces, one in the back, one in the front, so it's easy. Even if after the line is here, you can just mount the back piece to the wall and then slap on the front piece and it just covers it up and you can keep on going extended, get some extra pieces uh, here. So that's the AC line set cover kit, worth 30 bucks or so. Um, so we'll extend it and put it into that. I have it cranked out at 85 degree Fahrenheit heat 
and it's running for about uh, 30 minutes at this point. I'm just gonna point and see how much heat it's pumping. You know, you could kind of see the laser there. It's over 110 degrees, um, even more. Um, so that is wonderful. You know, it's, the room is warm now. Um, so this is great for winters and uh, great for summers for just both heating and cooling. So why don't everyone do this? It's mainly because of um, the installation cost. These things go anywhere between $500 to $700 for that unit, outdoor, indoor unit. And I can put the link in the description, you can pick it right away, exact same model or even some other models. But the challenge is installing it. You call a professional, they're gonna charge your arm and the leg to install this. At that point, it doesn't make sense to install this because you could just buy full ducted AC, whole house AC, you know, for that poor amount. So this, uh, doing it ourselves makes all the difference in this case, especially in this particular unit. And that is exactly why I'm making this video to showcase, yes, it does involve electrical, it does involve HVAC knowledge, and it does involve a little bit of building code and, you know, going through walls and all that. But you know what, instead of spending astronomical amount, you're getting a great deal by installing it to yourself. And check the codes and learn about it and all that. Generally, you know, whether it's electrical or plumbing or everything has certain codes that you go by and you finally get a really good product. You, you can overdo things, that's fine. Just don't cut corners. Uh, nice and expensive unit, but it's great. I'll put the link in the description again. I hope uh, this video was helpful that uh, you would attempt one yourself. We do have to clean up a little bit, you know, wrap up the cords on the outside and all that stuff, but everything is done, it's working great. Now we have a good unit for the winter to work in the garage and finish up the garage as well. All right, I will see you in the next video. Please subscribe and I'll bring you more content just like this, DIY projects that'll save you money and also would be of interest for you to watch and learn as well. Okay, I will see you in the next video.